The National Railroad Museum is hoping to put shovels in the ground soon. Of course, last week, the museum launched its public fundraising campaign for phase one of its expansion plans. Now, this Fox River expansion project, you're looking at it right here, will cost about $15 million, but 12.8 of that is already accounted for. Phase one will update and increase event spaces, house more railroad cars and exhibits, and quite frankly, elevate the museum's destination status. And we're pleased to be joined by Jacqueline Frank now. She is the CEO of the National Railroad Museum. So since last week's public launch, what kind of bounce have you seen? What kind of interest have you seen? And oh. what kind of dollars have you seen? <laughs> we, we have seen so much interest. Actually, the night of the announcement, we started getting donations okay. towards it. Uh, people are excited, though. We keep getting so many people who are contacting us asking for more information. They're wondering when we're going to break ground. Yeah. They're very, very excited. So what you're trying to raise is $3 million. Correct. So where do you need that money in order to put a shovel in the ground? So your timeline is still, <laughs> we're all still trying to figure that one out. Yeah, it's kind of a, a yes and no. We received $7 million from the state of mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Um, when you go through that process, there's always an agreement and we work a lot of paperwork that sure. has to get done. So we're just getting to that point where we're going to sign on the dotted line with the state. Once that money's there, we'll be able to put our shovels in and get started on the project right away. I, I know this was talked about a lot last week, but the mm -hmm. NFL draft just kind of hangs there <laughs> as this pseudo deadline, if you will. Right. Why is it so important for you? Well, you know, we want to be a really good community partner. In the NFL draft, it is bringing, you know, I heard an estimate of 250,000 sure. people. We want to make sure that we are able to help accommodate that. Um, not only just the draft itself, which we're really hoping that we can aid the Packers and the NFL organization sure. with that space, but all the people that want to come and visit Green Bay. If you think about it, that many people, we're going to need attractions. We're going to need space for them to go. With this space, uh, if we take the draft out of the equation, mm -hmm. The event space itself, you, you must have done some marketing and research to try to find out just how much of a desire there is because this really will open up all kinds of opportunities for you folks and, and for those seeking to hold their events in Green Bay. Oh, absolutely. And we started researching this as far back as 2015. Okay. And we were seeing, we have an event space already. We use it for education sure. as well. And we were seeing between 2010 and 2015 about a 40% increase in our attendance. Okay. And then we kind of stopped and we realized stopped that or plateaued i should say plateaued okay, is a much would a, be bad <laughs> yeah and it wasn't a stop it was definitely a plateau and what we noticed with that was we were kind of butting heads we had education programs we had weddings we had corporate events we had community sure. events everyone wanted the space at the same time this new space is going to allow us to do twice that can it also be self-serving to the extent that it will introduce new people to the museum and then to see what it's capable of they then might become donors and interested in because this is just right. phase one of, of the grand scheme right right it's a four phase scheme so this is phase one then we'll be gradually adding all the way around the building and it is a little bit self-serving i mean we want in a good way i'm sorry i should have said way. I in a good way no because what it's going to do it is going to introduce new people sure. to the museum and we do that for so many of our special events it also helps us be more financially self-sustaining sure. i mean we ask the community to help us build these big things but we're not asking the community to come in and keep us running. Right. We have a plan for that. You mentioned the education part of it, and, and maybe some people don't understand that phase or aren't familiar mm -hmm. with it, one or the other. Uh, explain how this expansion allows you to better serve those needs, because there are school children in there all the time. There are. We have over 12,000 students every year that come to the museum, and we, we're really lucky. The trains kind of fit a niche in uh, in our community. We get a lot of kids who either have special needs or at risk, okay. um, lots of autistic children. Sure. That really speaks to those groups. And, you know, for some kids too, school isn't enough for them. They're not, you know, they're not connecting in the way that you want them to. And you get them into our building and they're in the trains, they're doing activities. We always are really big on hands-on and immersive. Sure. And suddenly, you know, physics or math or science or whatever it's they're learning kind of clicks. You know, there's that immediate feeling like, okay, you know, I'm going back in time now. I'm going on to this train. Very Here's cool. history. Yeah. yeah. So it's no longer something you're just reading in a book. It's something that does 
resonate with them and hopefully will you know spur them on to be inspired to learn when they are in the sure. classroom. Well, you mentioned science, math, STEM class, STEM mm -hmm. uh, education is something that goes on right. there. If you had your wish list, you mentioned four phases. Mm -hmm. At the end of four phases, what would your wish list, what would you have checked off that box? Oh, in terms of physical sure. items? Well, the wish list is going to be everything from having more space for an entry. You'd be okay. surprised how many kids <laughs> cram up our entry yes. hall. We want to make sure we have plenty of space for that. We want to have a, our third phase is going to be education, big education space, restored trains where kids can sleep on overnight Very for those cool. overnight yep, programs. We talked about that off camera. And then the last piece, of course, is the big roundhouse. Sure. You know, it's really important for us to preserve those trains. And a lot of people know that we're on a restoration schedule. Everything is going to be brought back to its original look. But what do you do with it once it's done? Leave we don't, it out in the cold for yeah, an entire winter. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that. We want to make it ADA accept accessible. It's comfortable all year round to go in those trains. And those trains are inside where they're going to stay preserved, sure. too. So that's, that's the biggest wish is that big roundhouse piece that's going to go in at the sure. end. All right. First things first, that is getting this Fox River expansion built and raising yeah. that money. Jacqueline, thanks so much. Good luck. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it.